you know, we've, we've seen that over the past, I don't know, what, 15 years that uh, Bitcoin and crypto has been in, in existence. First yeah. it was, it was too small and it was ignored. Now we've gotten to the situation where the, the markets are breaking down. There is this escape valve. Bitcoin is proving that it's very responsive to uh, the inverse of policy of global central banks and, and governments in that, okay, if you want to print more money, well, then this thing is going to go parabolic. And it's it's a smoke alarm. It's very visible. It's globally traded and they can't shut it down. And so now we've gotten to the situation where, you know, Pax Americana has now allowed a Bitcoin ETF, which is to allow the largest TradFi managers to take the, the take what Bitcoin is, convert it into a financialized asset and hopefully convince people who just want to earn, you know, invest fiat to earn more fiat that, OK, you don't really need to own Bitcoin. Here's this ETF thing. Put your money in here and it may go up, may go down. But at least I know that your dollars, euros, yen, yuan, whatever is still safely within the system. And then if I, the government or central bank, need to find a pot of money to debase, it's still sitting right here and it hasn't escaped. And so that's why I think starting in you know June of this year or of last year, the SEC finally all of a sudden decided that BlackRock was the suitable BlackRock Fidelity and all the other people who got their licenses or their approvals to start trading ETFs, all of a sudden could start, you know, trading these products six months later, where the Winklevi, I think, launched their first application in 2013, right? And obviously yeah. in Hong Kong, they're we following- We need to acknowledge so, them as pioneers. Yeah, right, good for them. They spent, I don't know how, umpteen hundreds of millions of dollars, probably in legal fees, trying to get this thing lying to the Hong Kong SFC to get a spot Bitcoin ETF. And I assume that in a few months, there'll be one there listed as well. So if you're Chinese or in that part of the world, there'll be a government sponsored vehicle for you to invest in Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin's price could explode to $1 million because of a potential crisis in the US banking industry. That's the latest message out from Arthur Hayes. Arthur has expressed his belief that the banking industry is on the brink of a bailout. If this occurs, Bitcoin will become one of the top choices for those seeking safety from a crisis, which could drive up its demand and value significantly. In his latest interview, Arthur spoke on the revolutionary aspect of cryptocurrencies, allowing people to securely store and access their assets without relying on central authorities. He also noted how governments initially ignored crypto but are now attempting to control it. Despite this, Bitcoin remains resilient, serving as a safe haven asset against flaws in traditional monetary systems. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Arthur speaks on the impact of the US elections on the Bitcoin price. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Arthur Hayes' highly anticipated Bitcoin price prediction for 2024. So, I mean, I know we all think that we're special and unique, but the situation that we're in, which is an over indebted empire is nothing new. Every single major empire that's ever existed in human civilization has gotten to this point where they've exhausted all the pro easy productivity gains and then resorted to printing money to cover the difference. And so the you know American empire of the past eight years, nothing is different. The only thing that's different this time, which is why it's so exciting to be in crypto, for the first time in human history, we have a way as the people who are not the elites running everything to escape the eventual downfall or changing of the global architecture. So previously, you maybe you had gold, but you know, it's really, really hard to move gold. It's fucking heavy. It's very obvious that you have it. You usually have to employ some either, you know, banks security. or security guards, somebody with guns or clubs or whatever. And the government usually has beer clubs and bigger guns. Exactly. So that's easy for them to take your stuff. But now with crypto and, and especially Bitcoin, I can store my private key in my mind. I can remember a 24, you know, 24 mnemonic word to mnemonic phrase and unlock my Bitcoin wallet anywhere where I have an internet connected device. So I can carry a dollar's worth of assets or a trillion dollars worth of assets in my brain. And nobody knows how much money I have or don't have which is the first time in human history we are able to escape the eventual change in the way that the global economy works. And so because we have this ability to finally escape and to separate money from government, we're creating this entirely new financial architecture that is grassroots level from the ground up. And it's so interesting to see all these very, very smart people around the world who literally all you have to do is read some, you know, read the white paper, understand a bit of code, 
the economics buy some and you can create your own exchange your own um whatever you want to create political system voting system decentralized autonomous organization like anybody can do this it doesn't cost you that much money it's literally just time and effort and now you can be part of a new financial system no no time else in our history of humans has the individual person been able to affect such massive change from a one to many perspective based on you know the virality of the internet and you know data moving this way so that's why this is super interesting it's a, you know, a similar setup but a different outcome for the average person who wants to do something different with their lives so bitcoin is just money in my in my you know lexicon of crypto i know that the eth maxis probably disagree with me but I think that Bitcoin <laughs> is the best form of cryptographic money that we have created thus far. And that is because the Bitcoin community prioritizes moneyness over everything else. And so right. obviously the Bitcoin blockchain could do a lot more things if um, you know certain Bitcoin proven protocols were activated, right? But right. there's obviously a well security concerns, opening up the attack vector. And so everyone's very conservative. We want Bitcoin to be the hardest money ever created, which is fine. And it is. Yep. Um, it has the largest market cap of any crypto. And of course, there needs just because you have money, you need a whole financial system, system as well. So we have Ethereum. We have all these other layer one um, blockchains that are trying to be the decentralized version of the Internet. Now, mm -hmm. they might have tokens that are deflationary in terms of issuance. The price might go parabolic. But at the end of the day, these ecosystems will prioritize being um, prioritize being a computer versus being money. And Ethereum is a great example. Back in 2016, when the DAO hack happened, and for those who don't know, basically, there was this um, proto VC fund launched by a bunch of grifters. And <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they raised... I think 150 million US dollars worth of ETH at the time, like I think the largest crowdfunding project ever in human history mm -hmm. at the time. And of course, their code was dog shit. And somebody was able to um, execute it in a different way than what they thought, and essentially siphon off a large portion of that money. And so, you know, the Ethereum community was faced with a very crucial decision point. Do we agree mm -hmm. to allow the miners to roll back the blockchain to a state before this, this this DAO thing happened, and thus everybody mm -hmm. keeps their ETH? Or do we say, you know what, a transaction is a transaction, this immutable, you lost money, you know, sour grapes, you know, so what, and we move forward. Right. So the community chose, we think that to, you know, increase adoption of our decentralized computer, we should make sure everybody gets their money back. And so they rolled back the blockchain and essentially we created, you know, Ether, uh, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is a chain where the DAO hack was allowed to persist. And so very clearly the community values the computer more than the money, which is completely fine. This is the point. Everybody just, the community comes together and decides on how they want to run these systems. And so we have Bitcoin as money and then we have a, a proto new financial system, decentralized finance with Ethereum as the largest uh, layer one. And obviously there's much, you know, many other layer ones like Solana, Cardano, Avalanche and all these other, um, coins and ecosystems that are trying to compete on the same metric of I am the best decentralized computer and therefore you should build applications on top of my network. I think we'll be in the 40,000s, you know, chopping around uh, in March before the halving. Um, end of the year, my, my, my target still, we cracked the all time high somewhere in late December of, uh, of this year. And then I think in the article, you said, the article you said 30 to 35, is that in the short term? Yeah, in the short term. So if my if my prediction works out and this sort of little mini crisis happens, I think we go down to the low 30s in Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin bottoms first, then the S&P and NASDAQ and the rest of the major global um, asset markets roll over, except for China, because China's got its own system, um, cycle working on over there. Right. Everything else rolls over. Everybody panics. Um, Bitcoin rises as panic happens because what happens when they panic, they cut the rate, they print the money, and then we're off to the races again. So I think it's a very, very short lived trading window if it happens. So if I'm right, I might have a few days to get out of my puts. If I'm wrong, whatever, I lose some money on the options that I bought, but I'm on so long fucking crypto anyways, it doesn't matter. Right. And we just keep stair stepping higher. Imagine if like Biden or Trump or RFK or, you know, Haley or whatever, clown is talking it's like i'm gonna stop 
Social Security and rollback benefits of the 1980s. And I'm going to move the defense budget back to where it was in 1950. And I'm going to, you know, you know, d delete the the TSA and Homeland Security. The Central and, Bank. He said he wants to shut the Central Bank. Yeah. Imagine if any one of these Muppets running for re uh, U.S. presidential election said that. Or any of the Muppets running for European Council said that. Or any of the Muppets in wherever, you know, the country that you're living in <laughs> said that kind of stuff. Let's roll back the government to where it was before we believed in this neo-Keynesian bullshit, right? Not going to happen. No one's saying that. So no one's addressing the real problem here. And so they're all just playing around the edges of the feds, the Fed and the central bank's going to print money. And I'm going to hand out money to this group and I'm going to, and vote for me. And another says, I'm going to hand out money to this group, vote for me. And so it's, it's all about who's going to take their money, print their money which demographic or which constituency they're going to hand it out to. And that's essentially who you're voting for. It's the, the, the root of the problem is not being addressed. Problem with other asset classes. Yes, you can be a stock picker and you can do really well. I, I don't have time for that. Not really my, my forte. Um, but the problem with other assets is nothing has outperformed crypto. Put up a chart like, you know, as a broad based sector, yeah. like SAP, NASDAQ, you know, MSCI Europe, MSCI China, you know, pick your market. doesn't matter. Nothing's out for crypto. So if the trend is they will print money and assets go up, then I should own the asset that goes up the most. I don't want to right. own the asset that goes up kind of the most because I've kind of shortchanged <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, great. I made 40% a year on the S&P, but Bitcoin I'm did kind of number one ish Well, I kind of number five. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, I want to buy the thing that's performed the best and Bitcoin has performed the best and central bank, you know, the basement of the fiat currency complex. And so that's right. why. Bitcoin and crypto is the only thing that I care about because it's the only thing that's done the best. So I think, again, we have two systems. The fiat system isn't going anywhere anytime soon, right? We have a large nope. percentage of the global population who likes fiat. They understand it. It makes sense for them. They've got a lot of assets in it. They're not going anywhere, right? Right. You know, my mom is not going to be using Bitcoin, period. End of sentence. She wouldn't even fucking, sure. you know, use she doesn't have a lightning wallet COVID. down in El Salvador she right wanted, now. She wanted to go to the bank during COVID and, you know, Put a fucking check in the bank because that's that's how she operates. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Do what you got to do. Uh, and so we have a lot of people in the world like that. So there's the fiat system, and we'd like to use some of the fiat assets in crypto, right? If you want to hold a dollar token, why do we need you to go all the way back to the bank? Why can't you, you know, trust some centralized intermediary to hold these dollars and then issue a, a digital crypto receipt? And you know that's what Tether and USDC and, and all these other stablecoin issuers are. And it's a great business. Tether makes, I don't know, fucking 5 billion US dollars a year free cash flow at these rates. Good on them. Like, I wish I owned that business. My fundamental problem with Tether and all stable coins that rely on the banking system is that for these to work, there must be a TradFi bank that allows you to hold, hold all these dollars and treasuries in their bank. And if you take a look mm -hmm. at Tether, I think I saw some report they're like the what 16th largest holder of US treasuries. Something insane, right? So there's Arthur Hayes showing his expert take on how Bitcoin could hit $1 million if the US banking industry faces a crisis. His viewpoint highlights how Bitcoin offers a different approach to finance, one that's not controlled by big banks. Instead, it gives regular people a way to protect their money from the ups and downs of traditional banking. In uncertain times, Bitcoin stands out as a reliable option for those seeking financial freedom. Hayes' insights remind us that cryptocurrency has the potential to change the way we think about money and banking for good. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 40,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one, and as always all the best.